with the surrender of Singapore in 1942, thousands of Allied troops became prisoners of the Japanese. From this huge force, a contingent of Australian and British POWs was sent to work at Sandakan Camp in North Borneo. The fate of these prisoners was to prove one of the grimmest of the war. While 150 officers were moved away to another camp, of the 2,400 prisoners remaining at Sandakan, only six men would survive to the end of the war. With his wife, Evelyn, Owen visits the site of Sandakan prisoner of war camp, today a peaceful memorial park, where it is hard to imagine the horrors suffered here. See, that's where your camp was, in there behind there. It's all grown up now, see? You can just imagine what it was like. No roadways. The only road came out through down there went down that way. Sandakan camp was eight miles inland from the coastal town of Sandakan itself. Here, the Japanese brought two groups of prisoners, a total of 2,000 Australians and 500 British, to build an airstrip for the Japanese. They saw a man or two with that poor bloke, they must like take away and shoot him. They had one intention, they wanted to kill you. Jim Milner was one of 150 Australian officers who spent nearly 18 months at Sandakan before being suddenly moved to another camp. Well, then the Japanese decided they had to meet their timetable, so they brought in a team of bashers. If you got up to wipe the, br you wipe the brow, you got to whack it. And we all had to stand with our arms out and the, the sun without hats for, until people were dropping. So I, I, I got stood up and got me pair of wings, as we used to call it, with your arms outstretched and look at the sun for an hour and a half. Stand there as long as they wanted you, looking at the sun. The cruelest torture inflicted on the prisoners was confinement for long periods without adequate food or water in the punishment cage, a cramped wooden box on stilts. You couldn't stand up, it was only about four foot high. And after the third day, they give us our first drink of water. And they made us drink that much, and we were sick. And then on the seventh day, the seventh evening, they give us a meal, our first meal. And then it was half rations from then We'd on. We'd all run around behind the guardhouse and fight the dogs for their dogs, their scraps. And we'd be fighting a dog over a bone. A cranky, savage dog, we'd be pulling the bone out of his mouth, and he'd be trying to snatch it back. March had begun. men start to drop out straight away. A lot of them were suffering the after effects of malaria. You can just imagine how they were. I think nearly everybody had touch of beriberi. We run out of food. All we were eating was little shoots of the fern shoots and uh, bamboo shoots. Any little snails or anything that we seen. We Camped overnight, they used to ask you to bring all the sick men out and put them there. You get them down the track a little bit and you'd hear the machine guns going off. I don't think anybody that wasn't there would never actually believe half of if you told them they wouldn't believe you. What went on there? How the, the hell that the men went through? No one on that. You couldn't tell them. Just close your eyes, remember them when you last saw them going away. 